Next at 10, another lithium ion battery catches fire, sparking a massive blaze this time in the concourse section of the Bronx. Several people are hurt. We'll have an update on those injuries. Plus, police on the Upper West Side are looking for the suspect in this surveillance video. They say he followed a woman into a building and then raped her. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? Right now on the 10 o'clock news. One person is dead and two others are in critical condition tonight after a small plane crash on Long Island. What officials say happened after takeoff and the latest on the investigation there. But first, a five alarm fire erupting at a grocery store in the Bronx this morning, leaving multiple first responders and one other person injured. The cause of the fire, yet again, an e-bike battery. Good evening. I'm Arthur Chien. Firefighters spent hours extinguishing the flames on East 180th and Grand Concourse. That is where Fox 5's Ashley Rodriguez joins us live from right now, where emergency crews are still on the scene some 12 hours later. Ashley. Yeah, that's right. They wanted to stay on scene just to make sure they really got rid of the fire because it was just massive. It completely gutted the supermarket and the laundromat behind me. Now, thankfully, no one was killed. But remember, there's damage you don't see. This neighborhood lost two businesses, dozens of jobs, and the city had to spend tons of taxpayer dollars to put this thing out. And business owners tell me that they were worried while this fire was burning just because it was so windy out here all day. They were concerned that the embers would fly over to their side of the street. Thankfully, that did not happen. And again, no one was killed. We are so thankful for that. Seven people, though, were injured. Five firefighters, one EMS worker, one civilian. No telling when fire crews are going to pack it up out here. Again, they really want to just keep an eye on it, make sure everything is put out. Investigations into the specific cause and whether or not this e-bike battery was certified or not start tomorrow morning in the Bronx. Ashley Rodriguez. Arthur, we'll send it back to you. Thank you so much, Ashley. A small plane crash on Long Island leaves one person dead tonight and two others in critical condition. It happened around three this afternoon. Officials say a single engine Piper took off from Republic Airport in East Farmingdale with three people on board. The pilot issued a May Day a short time later, saying there was smoke in the cockpit and turned back to make an emergency landing, but the plane crashed crashed in North Lindenhurst. No one was on the ground was hurt. Federal officials are now looking into what happened. An NYPD manhunt is underway for a suspect accused of raping a 21 year old woman on the Upper West Side. The disturbing incident has residents in the area understandably shaken. Fox 5 Stephanie Bertini has more. And tonight, the NYPD's Hate Crimes Task Force is investigating an anti-Asian assault in Queens. It happened Thursday afternoon on Junction Boulevard in Jackson Heights. Police say a female suspect yelled anti-Asian slurs at a 44-year-old woman and a 24-year-old man. And along with two male suspects, they punched and kicked the victims. They then drove off in a white SUV. The victims were hospitalized. After being excluded again from marching under their own banner in the St. Patrick's Day Parade, the Staten Island LGBTQ plus community turned to an event of their own today. Fox 5's Christine Russo has the details on the controversy. And meanwhile, in Woodside, Queens, bands, fans, and elected officials marched in today's St. Pat's Parade for All, the iconic British punk band, The Pogues, were the Grand Marshals. This parade started 20 years ago after members of the LGBTQ community were banned from the Fifth Avenue Parade. It is considered the most inclusive and progressive celebration of Irish culture. And there is good news tonight for commuters. Governor Hochul is hoping to stop overcrowding on the LIRR and is ordering the MTA to add more trains effective tomorrow. The governor has ordered the LIRR to increase rush hour service to Brooklyn, lengthen trains serving Penn Station, and add cars to all trains that were overcrowded last week. Hochul is also adding more customer service personnel, especially at Jamaica Station, to help commuters with questions about transfers. Coming up, President Biden marking the anniversary of Bloody Sunday today. The details on today's march during his visit to Sel Selma, Alabama. 
and his renewed call for new voting protections. But first, Audrey Puente is here with a look at the forecast. Audrey. Well, it turned out to be a really nice day across the tri-state area, Arthur. Temperatures were above average and a little bit spring-like across parts of the region. A lot of readings were in the 50s today. We're in the 40s to the north. And right now, we're sitting pretty comfortably with some clouds starting to roll into the picture. We are expecting a nice start to the week, but we do have some rain chances coming up. I'll have the details. Tina? Well, Transports Extra presented by Toyota to extend their winning games, but a tall task as they face the Celtics in Boston. We'll bring you my one on one interview with Mets manager Buck Showalter from spring training and New York Red Bulls captain Sean Nealis also checks in. The news on Fox 5 brought to you by MSC Cruises. Can you teach an old dog new tricks? Absolutely. Would you like to try a throw frisbee? I would one? love to. Okay. Here. Let me take Okay, you will hold this. Oh! Hold. <laughs> hold this. Oh! Hold. <laughs> you all right? <laughs> Yay! For the hottest celebrity and entertainment news, join Billy Bush for Extra weeknights at 7. You're watching The 10 O'Clock News. Today, President Biden visited Selma, Alabama, commemorating 58 years since Bloody Sunday. He took part in the annual march and spoke out about the fight for voting rights. Fox News correspondent Lucas Tomlinson has more from the White House. Coming up, another train derailment in Ohio this weekend. What the company is saying about this crash compared to the one in East Palestine last month. The ultimate tool for manipulating life. Curing cancer by hacking the human genome? We will see diseases cease to exist. Monday on V5 o'clock news. It's another pure gray morning. And I get up right when I walk right into the path of the light. 911, what's your emergency? Nine one one spring premiere, Monday at 8 on Fox 5. Audrey Puente's got our full forecast, and man, Audrey, what a beautiful day. I hope it lasts. It was a really nice finish to our weekend, Arthur. Yesterday was a little dreary. We had a lot of clouds in place that kept things a little cool, but today with more sunshine, we were able to warm it up to 53 degrees in Central Park. That was roughly at about 1 o'clock earlier this afternoon, and that is above average for this time of year. This morning, we started off with a low of 38, and the record high was 72 degrees back in the 1800s. Also in the 1800s, we recorded our record low, which is 3 degrees. Right now, it's still pretty nice outside 45 degrees in Central Park. It's 43 in Islip as well as Bridgeport 42 in Poughkeepsie 36 in Monticello, Monticello and that'll be our cool spot on the map right now. But all of these numbers are running warmer than they were at this time yesterday. Now our winds have definitely picked up in speed. It was blustery all day long and that's continuing to be the case tonight. Right now we have sustained winds. These are sustained winds at 25 miles per hour in the city 19 in Newark, but gusts are even higher than that and the winds will slowly begin to kind of weaken as we go into the next next uh, 12 to 24 hours. So look at the satellite and radar shows that things are relatively quiet. We have a couple of clouds out there tonight and we should stay dry throughout the entire region. In fact, the northeast is relatively quiet. We have high pressure and control that's going to keep things nice and dry for the most part. And then we're watching for this system out towards our west. We're watching it closely because it will be providing us with the chance our next chance of precipitation. But out ahead of it, a nice mild wedge of weather is approaching much of the uh, southeastern states here, but it does creep further north where it places like Kansas City. Even Chicago is pretty decent today with a high temperature of 50 degrees. All right, here's a look at our future cast. Tomorrow we'll start out with sunshine and it's actually a beautiful start to so what's going to be a relatively decent day. Well, a few clouds in the afternoon, quick moving showers coming in late in the day on Monday and then in the evening. And that's when we'll see that round of snow and rain off to the west now making its way into the region here. And it'll be pretty steady overnight, but it should clear the area just in time for the morning commute on Tuesday. There'll be a couple of isolated showers left over, but much of the commute should be just fine. By lunchtime, we'll break back into sunshine across the area, and it should stay nice and quiet for the rest of the afternoon and evening. In fact, we're going into a nice dry stretch of weather as we go into the second half of the week. So tonight, we drop down to 36 in the city underneath mostly clear skies. Tomorrow, we're going up to 51. That's really nice. And then we'll have a kind of clouds in the afternoon. Snow and rain arrives in the evening. 
but it'll quickly be out of here by Tuesday morning. It'll be windy on Tuesday with a temperature of 45 degrees, and then we'll stay in the 40s for the rest of the week. But the good news is we're also nice and dry. We'll have plenty of sunshine for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. As we go into the upcoming weekend, though, we do have the threat of a messy mix of snow and rain as we go into Saturday. Arthur, over to you. I know blizzard this week. Terrific. Thanks, Audrey. Well, coming up, Chris Rock is speaking out about the notorious Oscar slap. What the comedian has to say about the infamous moment during his new stand up special. For the second time in a month, a cargo train has derailed in Ohio. Part of the train went off the tracks in the city of Springfield there. This was last night. It is owned by Norfolk Southern Railway. That is the same company that owned the freight train transporting toxic materials when it derailed in East Palestine a month ago. A spokesperson for the company says there were no hazardous materials on board this latest train that derailed. Did a recon of the site found nothing that spilled onto the ground and nothing um, very minimal uh, material on the actual cars themselves that actually dried very quickly. There is no uh, spillage onto the ground or into the waterways at this time. There are no reports of injuries, but emergency officials asked nearby residents to shelter in place as the situation was being assessed. The United Nations taking a big step towards preserving marine life and biodiversity in our oceans. 100 member nations signed a historic treaty that had been in discussions for more than 20 years. Its goal is to conserve 30% of the ocean and land by the end of this decade. Greenpeace says very little of the high seas has any any protection from pollution and overfishing and believes countries must ratify the treaty as quickly as possible to protect these oceanic sanctuaries. Chris Rock performing live on Netflix on Saturday and talking about the infamous Oscar slap. The special was called Chris Rock Selective Outrage. It is his first stand-up special since Will Smith assaulted him on stage last March during the Academy Awards. Rock jokes, he took the hit like Manny Pacquiao, considered one of the greatest boxers of all time. Chris also says he was just caught in the crossfire in Smith's relationship with his wife, Jada Pinkett Smith, adding, quote, she hurt him way more than he hurt me. We're going to be right back, but first, let's take a look at what we need to know about tomorrow's community. It's time for the Toyota Traffic Tracker. I'm Inez Rosales with the Toyota Traffic Tracker. We have construction going on Monday and Tuesday on the Harlem River Drive northbound near the McCombs Dam Bridge. The left lane will be closed from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. Tune into Good Day New York starting at 4.30 in the morning, and I'll keep you updated on your commute. Now, if you really love to go on cruises, then here's an epic deal. Life at Sea Cruises has a ship set, setting sail from Istanbul on November 1st, and for the next three years, that's right, three years, it will stop at 375 ports around the world. And if you have to work while you're cruising, the ship also has 14 office spaces. The cost, only $30,000 a year. That's a lot better than paying rent in New York City, eh? Right. Audrey's got a final look at our forecast. It's a deal. I'm like, that's <laughs> Actually, a really good deal. We'll have to look more into that. All right, folks, let's talk about the temperatures here. Uh, the numbers are going to be pretty decent overnight. We'll be in the upper 30s in and around many locations in the city. Freezing market white plains will be in the 20s in Monticello. We'll have partly cloudy skies. And then tomorrow, we'll have high temperatures in the 50s in the city. We will start out with plenty of sunshine. However, clouds will start to roll in in the afternoon. And then tomorrow night, we do have snow and rain that will linger until the early part of Tuesday. Then it clears out quickly. It'll be gusty uh, on Tuesday with a mix of sun and clouds and we have temperatures in the 40s for the remainder of the week. Arthur? And thanks so much, Audrey. That is all we've got for the news side of things. Have a fantastic week. Good day. We'll have the latest headlines starting at 4.30 a.m. And stay with us. Sports Extra with Tina Servacio starts right now. Coming up on Sports Extra, the Knicks try to win their ninth game in a row as they face the Boston Celtics on the road. Can Julius Randle carry the load after scoring 43 points in the Knicks' last second win over the Heat without Jalen Brunson tonight?
It's been an interesting couple of weeks of spring training, and nothing is more interesting during these flow of practice games than a few buckisms. And that's what we bring you tonight from my conversation with Mets manager Buck Showalter during my time in Port St. Lucie. From his thoughts on being named the 2022 NL Manager of the Year to what is different about each of his players on his roster and how that impacts the way he plays his guys. The 2023 Major League Soccer season is underway, and tonight you'll hear from the New York Red Bulls' new captain, Sean Nealis. The 25-year-old hails from Massapequa, Long Island, and you'll hear what he has to say about the other Nealis on the Red Bulls, his younger brother Dylan. And before we get caught up in all the madness of college hoops in March, there's a big buzz about a couple of shooting guards from Cardinal Hayes All Boys High School. I head over to the Bronx to chat with two of the top recruits in the entire nation, Ian Jackson and Elijah Moore. March has come in like a lion on the hardwood diamond and the pitch, and we have it all covered tonight. So let's get this edition of Sports Extra started right now. Welcome to Sports Extra, presented by Toyota. Good evening. Hope you are having a great weekend, and we are so glad you're spending your Sunday night here with us. This is Sports Extra, presented by Toyota. I'm Tina Servasio. Well, when the Knicks are hot, New York City thrives. Remember back during that 2012-13 season? 54 wins. I remember it well. How about when the Knicks made it back to the playoffs right after the pandemic back in 2021? That was a fun summer. Unfortunately, the playoffs didn't last long, but do you remember the vibrancy and the electricity in the city? Well, over this recent eight game win streak, the fifth place Knicks have captivated the city with their high scoring, gritty style, thrilling finishes, and some spectacular individual performances. Now, tonight, the orange and blue are faced with a tall task, taking on the number two team in the East in the Boston Celtics. But it's been a challenge that the Knicks have managed this season. They won two of their first three meetings so far this year. Now, I've been trying to talk until this game ends, but it just keeps on going in Boston. They have now forced a second overtime. The Knicks are currently up by four in the second OT, 126 to 122. I will keep you updated, and we are going to bring you these highlights once this game comes to a conclusion. And just to let you know, this is a game that the Knicks are playing without point guard Jalen Brunson 